Hey everyone, welcome back to the Mark Loeffler Experience. Um, you know, we're just trying to do new things here. We're, um, yeah, we're just feeling it out, guys. Uh, you guys tell me what you like and uh, what you don't like. Everybody should be subscribed by now. We're at 330 as of today. Goal is to get to 1,000. And we have one of our first subscribers on today, and he has a bunch of questions. So we were doing this over the phone, and I thought, why are we doing this over the phone? Why don't we just jump on a Zoom call, record it for everybody on YouTube, and uh, yeah, I mean, we'll make some magic happen. So guys, <laughs> like and subscribe. Uh, click the notification bell so you guys get the emails every time. And basic, I think the basics of this, yeah, we can turn that off. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> rookie, rookie mistake. That's all good. I, I, you know, what you're gonna get from this video is I mean, you're a brand new investor and yeah, we're going we're gonna to walk through some of the steps. So why don't you uh, give us a brief introduction and I know you have a list of questions, so we'll get going. Yeah, uh, so my name is Aero Palladian, uh, born and raised in Cambridge, Ontario. I live in Kitchener right now. I graduated from McMaster University back in 2015. Uh, my condolences. So <laughs> I had a good time. I loved it. I loved yeah. it. Um, I did uh, civil engineering there, uh, specialized in structural. So after graduating, I did two years of structural design. And then since then, going back into like the project management field, um, working for a general contractor, doing mainly like mid-rise buildings and uh, other types of industrial before. But in the last like three years, I focused mainly on like, mid-rise building, low-rise buildings. And because uh, of COVID, um, I did get laid off back uh, beginning of April kind of a weird, very, very weird scenario. And it was just so meant to be like, I was always dreaming about real estate investing, but I was so comfortable, like kind of in my, in just daily routine and the job, uh, you know, paycheck to paycheck, just, just, it was comfortable. Like, you know, it was a good paying job. It was comfortable, but I actually had switched jobs right before this whole thing kind of um, took off. Yeah. And then after uh, Doug Ford's announcement where like, like if work didn't have the permit, it was kind of shut down. It was like the Friday before I get, got laid off on a Monday. And that really just opened my eyes to like, it was kind of a big wake up call. Like you need to do well, what you, you can't, love to do. Well, you can't rely on other people too, right? Exactly. And uh, like my, my, my father's an entrepreneur. So just growing up, like I never, never saw him like having to take vacation time to take me to like a basketball tournament or, or whatever. Right. So it was just that, that comfort that, like he was always there for me. And that's kind of what I, like I'm married with two, two kids under two. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. Thank that's you. Busy. <laughs> yeah. Very, very busy. So um, I, j I just want that for my family too. And I said with my construction background and, and structural background, like in structural design, mainly doing houses, like, you know, why not? Um, yeah. It's, why it's not? Funny. Why not go for it? It's funny. You have a very similar path to uh, one of my good friends, Alex Powell. Oh, okay. Yeah. I hired him. And he was working, I think he lived up in Kitchener, Cambridge area, and he moved down to Hamilton. Maybe he'll move back down to Hamilton. Who knows? Yeah, you never know. Never know. Anyway, yeah. so, yeah, I mean, you got a bunch of questions. So why don't we, why don't we just get into it? Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, a huge thing for me, just thinking of like, I mean, I, I think of it like kind of like in, in golf where like you always want like that smallest advantage makes the biggest difference. Because like if you can find a way to add a couple strokes on your game, like you're like you've gone on to the next level so see i always want know, to take strokes off my game not at them but yeah it's true though you're right <laughs> <laughs> so um i just thought to myself like you know anybody can go on realtor.ca anybody can have a, a real estate agent you know find them you know opportunities but there's so many people doing that like my big question was like what's like tips and tricks for like off-market deals like do you go door to door go on Kijiji to look at what people are throwing on there, you know, talk to other realtors, like how do you find wholesalers? Just kind of like a huge variety of questions there. Uh, I mean, so how, I guess how, how to find off market deals. So number one, I, I, for the majority of my life, I bought properties that were for sale on MLS listed by a realtor. I sold them through MLS listed by a realtor. Um, and I made a hell of a lot of money. Some my best deals have come from MLS. I right. mean, lately, like in, in the commercial apartment world, a lot of um, I mean, a lot of deals are, are done through realtors still. Yet they're off market, um, and there's still multiples. 
and where to find them. So, I mean, off market, on market, you want to be working with realtors or people who are, are finding those for you. I mean, there are tons of like Facebook groups out there that um, where wholesalers are, um, Canadian properties for sale. I mean, it's ran, run by um, Elizabeth Kelly. Sorry, I'm just taking notes while we talk. Yeah, I mean, and um, then, you know, like... What was that called? Bene uh, building yeah. Canadian... So, so it's uh, Building Wealth Canada, Properties for Sale. Elizabeth Kelly. And I mean, I don't know if you watched the uh, Larry and Mandy Branham. They have a seven-figure real estate investing group. And I mean, there's tons of people who post stuff up there, uh, deals for sale, people looking for money, that type of stuff. I mean, it's easier than ever, I think, to, to connect and people are trying to build lists all the time. I mean, I know that when a lot of these people started, there was Kijiji and that type of thing. I think it's more Facebook groups now. Facebook groups. Yeah. Okay. And I mean, I mean, I don't know if you've gone to like the right club, R E I T E. Uh, they're doing online meetings now. There's tons of people in there that are probably wholesaling and flipping or I, I mean, Okay. Yeah, I mean, or gain uh, G H A I N. Um, there's local uh, ones to to Kitchener Waterloo area that I'm sure you could look up. But the biggest thing is it, to find off market deals is to network. I mean, you right. can do what my buddy Ian Zabo did, and uh, I mean, he used to go around and say, "I buy ugly houses," and he'd buy, drive, drive past one, he'd put a, a, a magnet on their door. Right. Right. Um, I, I'm surprised he never got punched out. But, uh, you know, he didn't. And, and I mean, he bought some of those, right? And he and people would say, well, my house isn't for sale, but I know an ugly house that you might want to buy. Okay. So, okay. I mean, and if you listen to Mandy Branham, I mean, when she was looking for partners, she would put out hundreds of emails, right? So what, what specifically are you going to do to go out and find that? Like what legwork and what groundwork are you going to put in? So right. You join all these groups and then do nothing that doesn't matter. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's actually a big one. I, I, I haven't gone through the, the Facebook groups. That's a big one. I mean, a lot of people are connecting that way right now. Yeah. I mean, makes you, sense. You, you damn millennials, right? Yeah. <laughs> everything's, everything's uh, digital now. Yeah. Okay. No, that's really helpful. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> I guess my, my next huge, huge question that I just keep flip flopping about um, is uh, whether or not to get my real estate license. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, here's the thing. I have my real estate license. Um, is it helpful? Maybe. I mean, here's the, I mean, like I can put you in touch with Alex Powell. He'll probably tell you it was helpful in his career because it, um, and you guys are very similar. He actually joined my team as a, as a listing agent when I had my team and I don't know if it was helpful to get his real estate license because he made income and he was around real estate all day or because of he got to surround himself with a bunch of people who were basically doing what he wanted to do, which was buying properties, um, renovating them and refinancing them. And right. he's, he's moved up from like single family to duplex to, to fours. Now he's doing eight to 10 units. Right. So right. he's made that progression. Uh, I don't think it's a bad idea to get your real estate license. I think it can definitely provide you and your family an income while you become a full-time real estate investor. Right. Okay. Yeah. Like that's, that's my big thing. Like I, I mainly like my passion isn't just to like buy and sell houses for other people. It's a lot of like my own investing and, and, and building, you know, a, a portfolio. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, so, and I mean, it doesn't hurt to have your real estate license. It's, you know, some people choose to go that way. Other people don't. I choose to, I, I, I chose to go that way. And then I, I honestly got too busy selling other people real estate to build my own portfolio for a while. And I basically was buying the worst of the crap, which was fine. Cause it, it, usually that made me the most money. It was, I bought whatever anybody else didn't want. Right. So that's what I ended up with. And then I made the decision to concentrate more on building my own portfolio. I still help people buy apartment buildings and, you know, my team helps people to, to do deals yet at the end of the day, it's, it's more, I've taken that step back. I don't do a hundred 
plus transactions a year. I don't need to. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Like, I mean, ever since like back in at the beginning of April, when I did get laid off, I was, I've actually been thinking about this since I graduated university. Um, and, but I just focused so much on getting my professional engineering license and just more of my career that I just kind of put it aside. And I've, I've, I've heard people say like, if you're going to do it, like just part-time, there's no point. But I just think to get that, again, to get that leg up instead of always having, like, it just makes me able to go out there more and, and find those deals. Yep. It, yeah. I mean, it doesn't hurt. Right. Okay. I mean, the knowledge you're going to get from doing the course or Humber and Aria, but I mean, it's, it's very minimal. Right. Oh, is yeah. it the, the, doing the courses, the classes... It, okay. it, it, it's just a formality. They don't teach you anything, in my opinion. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's another thing I thought it would help taking those courses. No, I mean, yeah. feet, on, feet on the street, um, looking at properties, do, doing your due diligence, knowing your areas, um, you know, knowing rents for areas, you know, knowing if I buy it here, my after repair value is this. That's, that's what makes your money. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're just going out there and doing it. Yeah. And I mean, having a real estate license, you can go preview 10 houses for sale. Like you can right. look at five horrible ones. You can look at five ones that have, that are nice. So you can start to gain that, that knowledge. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, next on my list, uh, another big question just cause like I got all the engineering construction background not as much on the finance end of things. Um, one thing I, I do worry about and, and wonder about is, is how do all these people build such a big portfolio with regards to borrowing money from like the bank, like getting mortgages and all that stuff where a lot of it is based on income and... So it's, it's clear you haven't watched uh, Larry and Mandy Branham. Not yet. Not yet. That's going oh, that's, that's, that's to be on the list though. So you should go watch that. I mean, they grew their portfolio from zero to 158 doors in five years. That that's what they hold now, and a lot of them are in in smaller um, residential properties that you need to get residential financing for, and they've they've managed to do it. But it's through joint venture partners. Right. Okay. Yeah. That was you post. Uh, I watched that video where you interviewed them, like last week. Yeah. Uh, last yeah. Friday it went up. I think. Yep. Yeah. 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 I, I did watch that video. Okay. But that's, yeah. and, and I mean, that's honestly where, I mean, that's how Alex can, can do it. It's how most people are doing it is they got joint venture partners. They max out on their personal side and then joint venture. Next question I had was um, specifically about like bungalow duplex conversions. Mm -hmm. um, any advice, tips for like, that's kind of like the first, um, investment I'm looking into. Yep. Um, I think it's like the safest. Uh, I, I, bet for me. It, it's pretty easy. Um, I mean, I would, I would talk to people in those groups um, and ask who's done them in those areas. I would get on calls with them. I, was, I would ask who they used. I mean, I know there's Andy Tran, Sweet Additions, Ken Beckendam, um, who are working in the Hamilton area. I don't know if they work up there. Uh, and I would just ask for recommendations on people who have done them and who they use to get them approved, right? Because that's the biggest thing. You just don't reinvent the wheel. If they have yeah. a formula to do it, you just go ahead and use the formula. Yeah, there's one in my area that I've, I've seen on, I've watched a bunch of his YouTube videos and uh, I haven't able to Matt, reach- the, Matt Pichet? Yeah, yeah. I've, I've reached out to him through uh, like LinkedIn and Facebook, but I haven't got a hold of him yet. Um, yeah. But that's one that I saw like right in my neck of woods, like he's been doing it. He's got a bunch that he's done. Yeah, I'll send you a contact through LinkedIn too that I have that uh, okay. might might uh, might be able to help you. Okay, I appreciate that. Yep. Um, and then based on that same kind of topic, um, so I'm mainly looking at like the Kitchener, Cambridge kind of market, staying away from Waterloo, but uh, Kitchener, sure. Cambridge for for now, but. What do you think about looking into like even smaller markets like the I'm pretty close to Woodstock, Brantford, those like even smaller areas? I mean, here's the thing. If you're doing a burr, it, it doesn't matter where you go, in my opinion. I, as long as you have the buy right, you know your reno and the 
you know, the cash flow after the refinance and your refinance make you money, then why aren't you doing this anywhere? Like, I know that yeah. uh, obviously Brantford and Woodstock are lower priced areas. Yeah. So you might get more bang for your buck. You might be able to take a two and a half story turn into a legal triplex. And, okay. And, and uh, make more money, right? So. Okay. I mean, and again, I don't know their laws in why well, don't like all, all the municipalities are different. So you need to, again, go find somebody who's doing stuff in that area and just ask them. Right. And, and tag along. Ask to work for free. Right. Okay. Um, that actually uh, gets into my next point, um, where you said legal triplex. Um, I, I've 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 been looking on YouTube a little bit to figure out how people are doing that, but uh, just based on from your experiences in the past, like, because the 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 bungalows to duplex is pretty simple. Like, you find a bungalow preferably with a side entrance to the basement and there you go. Well, you make the basement. For, I probably wouldn't do it if it didn't have it. Cause it's going to cost you 15 to 20 grand to put one in. Right. So, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. with that side entrance, um, you got your basement heights and everything like that with all your fire separations and everything, it makes sense to me, like making that illegal, um, basement apartment. Um, yeah. but with the triplexes, I kind of, I haven't figured out yet. Like, is that a, a popular um, burst strategy or? It, 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 well, it's super popular because you can buy it for, I mean, I don't know what they're, they're buying it for four to 500 grand. They're putting 150 in and they're, they're worth 800 after. Well, th those are Hamilton numbers. Yeah. Right. You know, so they're basically pulling out all their money plus 40 to 50 grand on every deal and they're cash flowing a thousand to $1,500 a month after that. So what kind of properties are they looking for that like before yeah. converting? Two and a half story single family homes. And, Two and a half. Yeah. Okay. And then, so how, like, where, where do the three units, how do you rise the three units from there? It just depends on the layout and all that type of thing. But most people are doing uh, like second and third floor together, main floor and then basements or a lot. Some right. of them, if the third, the, the, the third story is big enough to do third, second, and first and main, uh, main and basement together. We got it. Got it. And then this actually, this question I came up with uh, based on uh, your interview we did with the gentleman, I forgot his name, but he was from Tampa. Jeff Warren, um, yeah. Yeah, because so my wife is actually dual citizen. Um, and I've, I've thought about uh, looking into um, like investing in, in the States. Um, any any advice? Like, is, is I think for now, obviously, it's smarter just to look for here for yeah. now, but... You know what? This it's the same advice, right? It's it's get out there and um, you know talk to Jeff, talk to investors that are doing stuff down there. I mean, I can introduce you to a, a number of them. Uh, like, just talk to them, right? And and figure out what works best for you and what your strategy is. Okay. I mean, there's a lot of opportunity down in the states. There's a lot of opportunity here. No, it makes it makes perfect sense. I think like I kind of had that in my head um uh, but you just reassured it it's just 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 you can ask those unlimited questions but at the end you just have to you have to get out there well you got to get, get out there and, and and you just got to take action right that's the biggest yeah. thing as you get you know get out there and look at properties like what like what are they what like what can you buy a bungalow for here here and here good what's it going to cost me to make it a legal second suite okay what's my refinance okay perfect what's my rent after and then you're going to develop your strategy and where you go and, and I mean, basically that's what you need to do. You, yeah, you just okay. need, to, you just need to get out and you need to figure out some of the numbers and take it from there. Okay. Okay. I think I got one last question. Sure. Um, and this is mainly, um, mainly both just like your typical, like flips, like flipping a house, um, your top, uh, rental, like your top areas where you put, the, the majority of the rental cup the money and stuff where you kind of avoid I, I mean we've done everything um i don't know if you've read my book fix and flip for canadian real estate investors um i'm, I'm halfway through it i got it right you, here you know, i mean ian zabo talks a lot about that in rentals the riches too right i mean yeah. a lot of the stuff we did we like we did total gut rentals um we'd come in we take out walls we like open concept things we would put new flooring new kitchens new bathrooms we add bathrooms um, we changed layouts. I mean, we'd had somewhere it was just clean up, clean up and right. refinance because they were just like, you buy a hoarder house, you just clean it out, kill the bed bugs, all the roaches and, you know, paint and 
new flooring and well kitchens and baths and whatever right but we yeah. didn't take down walls or anything so it just it really depends on on the house it really it really depends on the property and, okay. and that's the thing with flips is they're very unique once you get into doing stuff like they buy rent or refinance on, on bungalows it, it's they're basically cookie cutter you know exactly right. what you're looking for i mean that's how uh, Mandy and, and Larry have grown so big is because they cookie cutter it. Now they're in Barrie, they're in Midland, they're in Hamilton, St. Catharines, um, Kingston. I mean, I don't even know where else they are, but they're all, all over because they can cookie cutter that process. Okay, perfect. All right. That, 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 that wraps up. I don't want to take too much of your time, but yeah, that wraps up uh, all my questions. All right. Well, my pleasure. Well, good luck. And uh, yeah, keep watching the channel and uh, tell all your friends to like and subscribe. <laughs> yeah, I will do. Thank you very much, Mark. All right. Thanks, man.